Hello and welcome back to Bug Rounds. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now we are starting a new casual mini-series, The Things That Lurk In Your Home. Now by casual I mean I'm going to pop up videos of this series as and when I find a specimen worth talking about. I'd also like to note that I am a UK resident, so the animals featured in this that you can find in your home will be those found within the UK. However, a lot of species I feature can be found in other parts of the world too. So what is it that we're going to be featuring today? Well, I caught something in this pot here. Let's take a look, shall we? Here, ladies and gentlemen, is the giant house spider. The scientific name will be written on the screen for you now. So my plan for this big girl here is to build her a home in captivity, study her for several weeks and then set her free. I am hoping that she is in fact gravid. If so, it would be nice to document the egg sac and document the spiderlings that come from that sac. We will then set mother and spiderlings free afterwards. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how you can keep your giant house spider in captivity. However, I would just like to add that it is only fair to release the spider after you took your time to document it. So it's super simple. This here is a rub, also known as a really useful box. You can pick these up at this size for about three pounds. Now you can use cheaper versions of tubs like this, but I like the clipping mechanism on these rubs. Next, get yourself a bottle cap, just off your old milk carton or fizzy drink, wash it out, pop it in a corner so that it stays flat and pour some water in. This will be the water source for your spider to drink from. Then you just need to create some sort of home for your spider. So you can use all sorts of things, be as creative as you want. But me, I'm just using some old bits of bark because it costs absolutely nothing and you can create a nice little den. I'm going to add some more soil to give it a sort of raised side, so it gives it a sort of cave to hide inside. Like so. They will like a place darker to hide and to web up to catch their prey. So all that's left to do now is to add our giant house spider into this box. Get yourself a straw, whether it be a plastic one or a paper one. Take the lid off and then we're going to guide the spider in. Now I want you guys to be aware that although they're not great at climbing smooth surfaces like this, this isn't very far up. So she could bolt out of here. Bolt is a term used for when a spider runs very quickly. Let's take this opportunity though to have a closer look at her. So there she is in all her glory. She has a nice fat abdomen being the bum part of the spider. Just, just here. So she may have had a recent meal, or there is that possibility that she is gravid, meaning pregnant. So we're gonna guide her in now. Okay. We had no need for the straw that time. She actually slipped on the slippy surface. Now, spiders can be fairly fragile, so it's best to try and guide them out. She came out a little bit unexpectedly. Now, you can't see very well with the glare of my light up here, but you can see that she can reach the top. I'll give you a better look. So if you see here, she's holding onto the rim of the plastic. This is why I was quite quick to put the lid on as I didn't want her escaping. Not because she'll cause any danger to me, but just because I've got a lot of stuff on my work table and I may well lose her. Uh, while she's settled in the corner here, I would like to add 
So I forgot to mention earlier, you will need to add ventilation holes to your tubs. You can do this with a soldering iron or a hot pin, things like that. But be advised, if you are a younger audience, make sure to get your parent or guardian to help you do so. So now we're just going to wait until she's settled and gone down. She might not like the soil used at the moment as it is very damp. But once she settles, we'll change angle and we'll move on to some more information. So where might you find these lurking in your home? Well, it's quite possible you'll see one run across your front room floor or your kitchen or your garage or your shed, maybe even in your bathroom. These are a lot more common than people think. We just don't always notice them. Why? Because they're nocturnal. They'll mostly be out at night. Females like these will build a little silken tunnel and she will remain there for most of the time, catching any prey that land in her web. The ones that you tend to see running across your floors are normally the males. Why? Because they're in search of a mate. Their sole purpose, pretty much, is to breed. But don't panic, they're not all going to be living in your home. This specimen was actually found in her silken retreat on a wall outside. So, have you seen one of these giant house spiders in your home? Comment below and let me know. Have you ever kept one in captivity? Again, comment below and let me know. Or have you seen the smaller species of house spider running around in your home? Again, comment and let me know. I love hearing from you guys and I love to hear your stories. In fact, whereabouts in the world are you from? Do you find something bigger and meaner than this lurking in your homes? I'd love to hear about it. I have friends in Malaysia, in Australia and plenty of other places to get far larger specimens than these lurking in their homes. So you've captured your giant house spider, what do you feed it? Well they will eat a whole host of live invertebrates. They will catch moths, flies and all sorts of things on their web. But we're going to try today with some of my home bred prey that I would feed to tarantulas and other exotic animals. Things she's probably never ever tasted and probably never will again. But before we do feed her, quite often spiders may want a settling in period when put in captivity to explore their surroundings and set up their web to be happy and cosy. Now I know you can't see anything on the screen right now, I'm just showing that she's actually residing inside there. So we're gonna give it a few days, let her create a web and see if she's hungry. So we will revisit once she's had a few days to settle in and see if she will take down some prey. So guys, it's been a few days and this one has webbed up significantly. I'm gonna be opening the lid now and chucking a roach straight in as this spider is incredibly fast and I'd rather not have it bolt out of the enclosure. Now the spider itself is actually just down here. You can see the abdomen there. Let's drop the roach in and see what happens. Got it. There we are. With almost lightning reflexes, the spider has taken down a roach, which has a similar body size to the spider itself giving it a bit of a struggle, a bit of a fight there, and it's pinning it down with those fangs. Let's see if I can get a different angle for you. So there we are. The roach is still having a little struggle, although it's not being able to maneuver itself very well with the jaws clenched into it, as well as being stuck on the web there. And the spider is happily sucking away the juices from inside the roach. So I managed to get a front angle for you. There's something incredibly mean looking about these spiders, but in fact they very rarely will bite humans. Something to bear in mind if you do want to keep one of these spiders. Sorry I just <laughs> dropped something in the background there. If you do plan on keeping one of these spiders for a while, 
and it does crawl on you, the worst thing you can really do is put pressure on it. That's where a spider is more likely to bite. Just let it freely run over you. I know it can be terrifying if you've got arachnophobia. Just let it run over you and back onto the floor. Now this spider would have never eaten a red runner roach before and that's because these roaches are not from our country so if you do purchase red runners make sure not to set them free although they will not survive really within our climate especially over winter months it is important that you try your best to keep as many within the uh, enclosure as possible where you keep your roaches and just take them out for feeding so you'll notice if you do capture one of these same with many other arachnids that they'll happily sit still while they digest a meal if they're undisturbed. I thought I'd take a shot from the back as well so you can compare the size again against a milk bottle cap over there and this spider has created an actual hammock so it goes up one side of the enclosure down into a pit towards its hide there and up the other side just up here they really are absolutely fascinating so I think we'll cut the video here I do have one other spider to show that you may find lurking in your home but that will be in a future video from now we'll be going back to my normal type videos I'm gonna keep on to this one a little bit longer maybe feature it some future feeding videos if you are new to my channel please feel free to check out my other content if you would like to support me even further i do have a patreon page and i also have a merchandising site where you can get hold of limited edition t-shirts as well as my normal ones i hope you enjoyed the first episode of things that lurk in your home and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching guys take care everyone bye bye